Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for the interview portion of Data Speaks, a competition arranged at the RFG 2018 conference in conjunction with Sequent. I'm Jenny, um, I'm a geologist here in Vancouver with Sequent, and I'm joined today by Irene, and you're from the Cornell University. Hi Irene. Hi. <laughs> so your original abstract was, Geological controls on the genesis of the Candelaria Punta del Cobra iron oxide copper gold district in northern Chile. Could you tell us the revised abstract title, please? Yeah, the revised abstract title will be um, Understanding How a Massive Geological Party Ended Up With Seven Copper Deposits. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> and what answer, uh, what question are you trying to answer with this uh, research? So the main question I'm trying to tackle is the how, where, and why the Candelaria Punta del Cobre district ended up hosting seven different mm -hmm. copper deposits. And the kind of deposit that is hosted, we call them IOCG, which mm -hmm. stands for Iron Oxide Copper Gold. And they're composed by iron oxide minerals, copper minerals, and gold minerals. And these are interesting economically in this point of, uh, point of view uh, mineral deposits because they host large amounts of copper. Mm -hmm. They're distributed all around the world. Mm -hmm. And in terms of geological time, they come from the Archean, so mm -hmm. something like more than two giga years ago, mm -hmm. down to the lower Cretaceous, which would be like 100 million years ago. Okay. Um, so my district is in northern Chile, in the Andean belt. And it's very interesting because it's the youngest um, IOCG belt. And because of that, it's also the best preserved and has the best exposure. Mm -hmm. So and within this district, I mean, within this belt, the Candelaria deposit is the largest one. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, if we can understand the how, where, and why of the Candelaria deposit, we can use that answer to tackle similar questions and other IOCG deposits around the okay. world. So uh, to simplify, what would you say are the most important concepts for somebody to understand when reading your research? So I think the main concept or like key word mm. that I will um, say is mineralization. Okay. So by definition, mineralization is the deposition of an economically important metal, which will form an ore body. And an mm -hmm. ore body is basically the space where this mineral is found, uh, which in my case is copper. Mm -hmm. And actually most of the research in the field of economic geology is done about mineralization, mm -hmm. how it happens. Mm -hmm. And the metals that form mineralization um, come from external fluids normally that come deep in the earth that we call hydrothermal fluids. So that's another key concept. Mm -hmm. So for example, my research um, is centered on how mineralization formed and the nature and transportation of these hydrothermal fluids that carried the copper. Mm -hmm. Um, I also look at high, how hydrothermal fluids interacted with the geology of the area where I work, and if I can use that interaction to actually target other places where we can find more copper. Yeah, oh, fantastic. And what role would you say data plays uh, within your research? Well, data plays a really, it's a huge role. So yeah. basically, like, most of my research is based on data interpretation um, and data analysis, mm -hmm. which I divide roughly into three main groups. So the first one would be observational data that I do on surface in the yeah. district where I work or in a drill core. So that would be like rock from deep in, in mm -hmm. deep from the surface. Um, and that is for characterizing realization and the geology in the district. Okay. The second um, data set would be on deformation. So in the deformation of the rock. So I used um, the data I collect is measuring the orientation of rocks and mineralization and seeing if deformation controls mineralization. And my third data set would be on the chemistry of the rocks. So basically on the concentration of a certain element within a chunk of rock down to a single mineral. Yeah. And that helps me understand the nature of mineralization. Okay. And of course, these three data sets are integrated to have a better understanding of the yeah. district. Fantastic. And finally, why is it so important for you to be able to share your research and share your data with us today? So I think there's two main reasons why I think it's important. Um, the first one has to do with geology. Mm -hmm. So basically, if I'm able to you know, um, learn more and have a further understanding on IOCG deposits, I can share that data and that will help us as geologists to find other IOCG deposits and you know, be better exploration geologists. Yeah. And the second main reason is has more like to do like with the social aspect. So basically, like on our modern life depends so much on metals and primary resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we use them for construction, technology, your laptop, my mm -hmm. phone, you name it. Um, and also for developing countries that still need more primary resources to for construction or illumination, to just to name a few. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, I think there's a lot of distance between the general population concept on mineral resources and how they use them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty common to listen to people like talking against the mining industry, but at the same time, changing their phones that if it was like a daily outfit. Yeah. 
So um, I think it's important for us as geologists to share our data and to get like the general population to understand where these resources come from. And I'm hoping that from sharing my data and my research, I can help on that. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, everyone else, thank you so much for joining. And this was Data Speaks, a competition organized at the RFG 2018 conference uh, in conjunction with Sequent. Um, all of these videos can be found on YouTube or at Twitter, hashtag CDataSpeak. Thanks again.